Okay, welcome back to module two. This is the second part, module 2B. We talked about CNC systems, and now we're going to talk about CNC controls. So um, for, for this, we'll have uh, just a few um, pictures that maybe will help to make it a little bit more real. I know this is a online class, and so these pictures can, as a result, be imp important. So we're looking at a has controller. And so this is a standard has mill control device. We're seeing everything, the, the display, the keyboard, and some of these other um, control items here that we'll be talking about as we move forward. This is blowing up into the, the keyboard. It doesn't have a query um, keyboard. If you've ever heard that term, most um, standard English keyboards are using that the way that the, the, um, the letters are put um, out here, but you have the numbers, you have the letters, and other types of different controls that we'll be getting into shortly. This is um, looking at the controller screen for HAS. It's a dynamic work offset page on the HAS controller, so we're looking at a, a particular page, and there's various pages that can be displayed, and it's all going to be tied in with uh, the controller based on what you're asking it to do. So um, we're going to get into this with the, the next chapter. Um, you can be thinking about it. So you are a newly hired machinist or engineer. Your foreman hands you a job sheet, set up, document, and print. And he says that the setup is finished. I want you to check it and then start the machine, load these parts, and run them. The challenge is that a controller is not one of you have used before. A lot of what you'll need to know to do the job is here in chapter 18, followed by chapters 19 and 23 uh, on operator skills and setups. So um, keep that in mind. This is um, the second part of module two, two for our class, um, but there's a lot more material that's available if you find this interesting, you wanna go further beyond the, the context of this course. So there's diverse controllers, but they all must do the, the same kind of functions, the same duties. In industry, there's a wide range of CNC controls, PC-based, RS, RIS, reduced instruction sets, and the, the familiar CNC panels, which I just showed in, in the opening slides, um, by far, by far the, the most common. Um, but no matter what they look like, they all have the same five purposes, and let's talk about that. So the, the five universal controller purposes to receive and store operating programs, manual now movement of access and other functions for setup and tool tooling purposes, display modes, positions, error codes, and other needed data. Four, enter data from an alphanumeric input device to edit and write programs. And five, enter and store um, and use setup data such as PRZ and fixture location, cutter offsets and tool shapes. So this is just an example, of the kind of things that you can be doing with controllers, um, um, program management, manual movement, display information, data entry, store and use data setup. And so that's just um, something that you can be thinking about. So let's talk about a PC-based controller. I know this kind of um, looks archaic here, but um, still, if you have a function that's working and that you no reason to, to, to tear it apart if you have something that's giving you what you need. A few smaller machines use off-the-shelf computers as CNC controllers. We'll have some mimicking of what we do in this course for our, our project work to give you an idea about that. Equipped with giant expandable memory, super fast CPUs, and familiar operating systems. So why not? That sounds like a good way to, to, to be using things. From the access drive discussion, recall that the controller doesn't drive access motors. Rather, it sends signals to relays. Any microprocessor could read a program and then send a weak signal to be amplified by the relays. Your laptop. Um, tablet or even your smartphone could do the job as long as it was programmed to, to manage a CNC machine. So it needs to have that proper interface. So there's knobs, dials, buttons, and screens that we have to be utilizing. So most controllers today are of a variety shown here. They have different, but still they perform the same five functions. And so here are just three examples of some complex systems. 
Okay, I'm going to stop the video here and then I'll give um, a synopsis of the things that we're going to be covering one at a time. So um, I'll be back shortly.